I've been working remotely for almost 10 years and I never worked in a physical office in my entire life. So over those 10 years, I went through all the possible ups and downs until I finally figured out how to thrive working in a remote uh, company. So in this video, I'm sharing eight key things that helped me try while working remotely and that can help you. And there is also a bonus tip. So let's get started. My name is Jelena and I'm a VP of product in a cool startup during the work week. And on weekends, I share my passion uh, for product management, personal productivity and remote work on this channel. If this is something that you're interested in, please consider subscribing. So I've been working remotely for the past almost 10 years. And for the past, honestly, shocking eight years, I actually worked for the, sta uh, for the same remote startup. Uh, there are around 50 people in the company I work in from 13 different countries. Um, our team is all across the globe from Bali to California. And I'm honestly not 100% sure, but I think uh, between us, we speak at least 20 different languages. Um, but English is the language we use at work the most. Um, our company doesn't have an office. It never did. Uh, we meet in person normally once a year for an offsite or an onsite, as we like to say, um, because we don't have an offsite, so to speak. Um, we use Slack as the main communication channel, on Zoom for our meetings, Notion and Google Docs for our documentation and a bunch of other tools, but that's kind of the, the pillars um, the company's built on. Uh, so with all this variety and added distance, things can get pretty crazy. So over past 10 years of working remotely and eight years working with the same team, I learned a few things that helped me thrive while working remotely um, so that I want to share with you today. So let's dive in. Number one, being self-motivated and autonomous. Um, I believe that the number one thing necessary for working remotely is being self-motivated and autonomous. The reason for this is that because of the nature of the remote work, you are on your own quite a lot. Uh, you're mostly working from home alone, but also while your team and coworkers are there to help you out in a remote company, if you just consider all the different time zones, some of your coworkers might, might just not be there, might not be online to support you uh, because it's just nighttime for them. So if you're not the type of person who is able to figure stuff out on their own, or if you're the type of person who needs the external push to stay motivated to do their job, things are going to be pretty hard for you. What I think helps is to focus on cultivating the growth mindset and openness to figuring stuff out autonomously and pushing through difficult hurdles on your own. That's the only way, honestly, to be successful in a remote company. Number two, communication, communication, communication. My friends, I can't tell you enough how over communicating is important in a remote company. And um, I'm not perfect at all uh, at this. Um, 10 years later, I'm still struggling with this personally. Literally just yesterday or two days ago, uh, we had a mini drama that could have been perfectly prevented if we had all communicated a bit better. Um, I honestly think that in a remote company, you can't communicate anything too much. Um, I read somewhere a while back that people need to hear the same thing eight times before they finally actually hear it. So if you feel like you're repeating yourself, just remember this information and then repeat the same thing as many times as necessary to make sure your colleagues actually heard you. The important thing is in a remote company, you can't over communicate. Number three, practice good video meeting etiquette. In our company, I said we use Zoom for our meetings. Um, usually we do video calls. Um, I wish I would have a bit more data on how many video calls I've done in my career so far, but I know for sure there were many, many, many. Um, so I've experienced all the meeting no-nos. Uh, some of them I'm guilty of myself, but I think we can all agree that there is nothing worse than having a meeting with someone with their camera off. I mean, come on. For good and successful communication, seeing body language and facial expressions is essential as hearing the voice. So how can anyone have good conversation talking to a square on the screen? I mean, that's insane. Um, other offenses include bad sound, such as a lot of background noise, uh, taking meetings from coffee shops, taking meetings for the street, taking meetings from the car. That happens a lot. Um, having lunch while having a meeting. I'm guilty of that one myself. And the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, what the heck is going on? Um, anyway, I think good rule of thumb is to behave in a virtual meeting room the same way you would actually behave in a physical meeting room. I think that's, that's the guiding principle here. Number four, make yourself visible at work. 
In a remote company where Slack and Zoom are basically your office space, uh, you will need to work a bit on being seen as opposed to when you're in a physical office space where you're just seen by default. Uh, the, west, the best way to do this is by being very transparent with what you're working on. In development, it's very common for the team to have daily scrum meeting where each team member shares what they're working on, what they worked on in the previous day, and if there's anything blocking them. Uh, this way, everyone on the team is basically synced. If you're not doing the daily scrum, then make sure you share publicly in a public channel what you worked on, what you're currently working on, um, what you learned, what you read, and participate in conversations that are happening on your team's Slack channel. The last thing you want when working remotely is to sit and wait for your name to be called out to actually participate in the conversation. It is actually your responsibility to make yourself visible and make your team aware of where you're at. Number five. Focus on your mental health. Working remotely can be challenging because you can be on your own quite a lot. Boundaries between work and personal life often are blurred, so you'll need to put some effort into maintaining sanity and good mental health. This means that you could work from a co-working from time to time in order to get out of your house and have people to connect to. Uh, you might need to define clear work uh, hours for yourself to avoid working non-stop. Also having dedicated workspace um, or a desk in your home can help create boundaries between your personal and professional life. Staying physically active is important too, especially when you sit a long time as most remote jobs require you to do. So go for that after work walk or do some yoga after you're done working. The most important thing is that to preserve your mental health when working remotely, you'll probably need to put some effort into it. Number six, experiment with what makes you productive. When working in a remote company, or at least in the company I work in, I notice that most of us are in charge of our own time. This is something that I personally love. That's my favorite thing about working remotely, but I know this is not everyone's favorite. So when working remotely, you might be in a position to explore what makes you the most productive and effective. Do you like to uh, eat your frog and do your most important task first thing in the morning? Do you prefer to focus on your meetings and emails in the morning and do your focused work in the afternoon? Are you distracted by your phone a lot and need to use a Pomodoro technique to stay concentrated when working? Um, should you do your workouts in the afternoon to break the afternoon slump? Uh, are you more productive working from home or from, from a coffee shop? Um, the experimentation truly here is endless, but it's up to you to figure out what makes you tick. Um, I think the experimentation is the price uh, we pay uh, to get this freedom of working remotely. So feel free to experiment and figure out what makes you the most productive, what helps you create results at your work so you can continue working remotely. Number seven, accepting different cultures. So in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we're around 50 people from 13 different countries in my company, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to be accepting and open to cultures different from your own. Uh, the fact is that just because uh, someone behaves differently from uh, what you're used to in your own culture, it doesn't really mean anything personal. It doesn't have to really mean anything about this person personally. It's just kind of how they behave in their own culture. So people from some cultures are more open and chatty, while people from other cultures are more private. Um, it's all normal and perfectly acceptable. So the only way to thrive in a culturally diverse uh, remote company is to be respectful, accepting, and aware that not everyone thinks and understands the same way as you do. Number eight, invest in your tech. I think that in any work, but definitely also remote work, having good tools is essential. If you're working from home, make sure you have good stable internet connection. Invest in good webcam and microphone so that when you're doing calls, your team can hear you and see you well. Since your computer is literally your office, make sure it's the best one for the type of work that you're doing. Even though these might seem like unimportant things, they will heavily affect the impression you leave on the people around you. In a remote company, your investment in your tech is your investment in your work. Without good tools to support you, it's going to be very hard to thrive. And I have a bonus tip on top of all these other tips that I shared in this video. And the bonus tip is own your learning. 
When you're working remotely, um, especially in a small company, it is possible that there is just not so much in offer in terms of organized training and seminars. Uh, if this is the case, then it is your responsibility to do the learning on your own. You will need to make sure that you're investing the effort to follow the industry trends, to learn how to use new tools, learn new skills, and so on. I can't stress enough how important it is to make the time and invest in your own learning. The learning you do is not just an investment in your current company, it's an investment in yourself. The knowledge and skills that you collect might be crucial for your next employment. So if your remote company is not really able to support you in terms of learning, then make sure you're supporting yourself. The last thing you want is to be stuck in the same place with the same skill set that you started with. So those were my top tips for thriving in a remote company. I'd love to shoot a video about etiquette in a remote company. So let me know if this is something that you're interested in. Thank you for watching this video. Here's another video from me that you might enjoy. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like, and I'll see you next week. Bye.